Today, you're gonna learn how to put together a mood board for your next project in Kiddo. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about mood boards and give you some valuable tips on how to make one. So make sure you stick around. First, maybe you're wondering, what is a mood board? A mood board, it's basically a visual gathering or a collage used to convey ideas, emotions, styles, often used for creative projects like brand design, for social media design could be used as well, and advertisement campaigns. Okay, now you know what is a mood board, but why do you need it? A well-crafted mood board not only fosters inspiration and cohesive design, but also minimizes revisions by clarifying initial concepts reducing misunderstandings and align concepts, leading to a smooth project process. And that's honestly all a designer wants. Now that you know that a mood board is a must in any project, let's create one for a fictional artisanal coffee shop. So first things first, we're going to quickly go over this fictional brief I made for a fictional brand so we can create our mood board. It is important to understand the brand before you start anything visual so you can build things based on what you know about the brand and not purely out of your imagination. So let's say this is my client, Pingado Coffee Shop. What do I know about them? I know that their brand values are organic and sustainable and youthful and inclusive. So they probably want people to feel welcomed in their space. Their target audience are young adults eco-conscious individuals and people draw to a garden-inspired atmosphere. And when it comes to aesthetics, we can focus on something more botanical, you know, organic, natural. Uh, they want a sensory font. And for the colors, the client asked to use green and yellow, but to avoid the color blue. Okay, now that we know all those informations about our brand, let's start our mood board. The first step in crafting a mood board is all about gathering ideas. I'm currently browsing Pinterest to snag some inspiration, but don't forget, you've got the whole wide world as your playground for ideas. Maybe head down to your local coffee shop and pay attention to their logo or their menu, even their social media presence. You'd be amazed at how design is just present everywhere in our daily basis. Feel free to explore other places to make your mood board more diverse. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna just stick to Pinterest to speed up the process and get the project rolling. I went ahead and crafted this mood board template in Kiddo. Keep in mind, it's just a starting point, okay? You're free to jazz up your mood board however you like. I've used these uh, mask shapes so I can effortlessly snap my images and some shapes down below for color palettes. If you fancy adding some info about your mood board, go for it. That would be very helpful and make your mood board seem more presentable and professional. I've also sorted the references into sections. I have packaging and illustrations over here, some imagery here, uh, logo and typography inspiration, and textures and patterns. I like to think of crafting a mood board as an analogy to cooking a recipe. Once you've got all your ingredients laid out, you just need to toss them into a bowl and give them a good mix. So let's give our mood board a good mix. All right, our mood board seems pretty balanced. We have four logo references, three images, two packaging inspirations, and one texture. Uh, make sure you save the rest of the references for possible future mood boards. I highly recommend that you show your client more than one mood board. This significantly heightens the chance of achieving, you know, outcomes that resonate with your brand. Also, make sure you maintain a consistent style. Okay, let's go ahead and add a color palette to our mood board. I usually grab some colors from the references and change a little to fit what I want. Now let's add some specifics about it. For example, it follows an organic and kind of floral style. Like we have sans serif and some handwritten type of brush typography. We see the presence of illustrations, abstract elements, doodles, and we have an earthy color palette. Now let's add some final touches, maybe decorate a little, make it more visually appealing. If you're showing a client, they're gonna like that. They're gonna, they wanna go for what is visually attractive. You can add the hex codes of your colors as well, or go beyond and explain your color palette. But I'm gonna keep it simple and stick to the color codes. 
After adding some elements, this is our final mood board. If you need to move stuff around or change some references that you might feel like it does not belong to the mood board, do it. This is part of the process. And that was our mood board 101. Hope it was helpful for your design journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.